Welcome home. We are WNST. Dallas and Baltimore and Baltimore Positive celebrating 25 magical years in our uh, magic sprinkle dust. Uh, big shout out to our friends at Curio and Foreign and Daughter on that as well. The 25th anniversary documentary coming out later on uh, in the month. And uh, really this week, we're, we're getting the Crab Cake Tour back out on the road. Uh, I spoke to some of Johnny O's people this week as well as Governor Wes Moore. I'm going to be talking about the bridge, talking about the peninsula. I have some great guests. Key Brewing is stopping by. Joe Golden, some folks uh, to talk about the peninsula at Costas on on Tuesday from 11 until 2, and then the Orioles play at 2 o'clock, and I'm going to have some Crab Imperial and some Oysters Rockefeller and probably some cream of crab soup because it's going to be that kind of a day for me. I'll be giving away scratch-offs in the Maryland Lottery these 10 times of cash, which I have remaining from Cup of Super Bowl from last month. By Friday, when we get the Fadeleys, I will have some Pac-Man, uh, waka, waka, waka. Uh, uh, we'll have some, some scratch-offs to give away. The new Lexington Market, the new Fadeleys, just had a delicious crab cake there on opening day. Can't wait to get back on Friday. We'll be there from 2 until 5. We'll be live. Nasty, you ain't going live no more. I'm going live on Friday, 2 until 5. So if you want to come down, be nice if you stop down. That's Coco's rule. Be nice. Uh, if you want to come down on Friday, 2 until 3, Luke will be there for pictures and autographs. Uh, he'll... And Leonard Raskin joins us now. I'm wearing his shirt. It's uh, tax season. He's not a tax freak out guy because he doesn't want his clients to freak out. So when I say it's tax week, Leonard, well, oh, for, well. for some of the world that it gets, you know, the loins a little bit in a, in a bunch, I think. People right. Are, people are possessed by April 15th. And it's kind of like you're driving down the road. You you're think you're doing everything perfectly legal. And then suddenly red and blue lights come up behind you. And uh, hold on, I, I, I've given you the emotion. Hold on. Do it I have it a might not be uh, you. Do I, hold on. Do I have a tail light out? It, no, is, is not my, that you know. Not that you know. I well, think it's my little sticker out of date because I got pulled nothing, over once for that. Nothing that happened, you know. It just sends the fear of God right through you. That emotion that just, oh, my God. April 15th has the same effect. And you know what's even crazier? Every day we stroll down to the mailbox. We get the mail. Nothing that matters, a bunch of junk, a couple things that we're going to look at, maybe something cool. And then you flip through, and there's a letter. Return address, Internal Revenue Service. And people go into that same, ah, what is this? You know what? Gonna... I've never been sideways with anything governmental, but I, I, it's it's the biggest fear we all have, right? That's right. I've, I've never the, been arrested. I've been sued no. illicitly. You can, you can look that stuff up as well. But, like, I – can I I've give never. you a funny story because you yeah, handle sure. my dough and you know sure. famously that I'm really good at certain things and the documentary will point that out. And I'm I, I and I'm not great at other things, which is why I need people like you and Scott Keck's been in my life, different people, lawyers that I've had in my life, yeah, sure. doctors we've had, in our, you know, people right. that have done important. Gotta heavy hire lifting. professionals to do their job. And this That's is why right. I have you at Raskin Global, or whatever. So. I've never told the story in the air, so you're making me tell the story. Yeah, go it. ahead. Because I've been pulled over a couple of times in my life. Um, I famously sure. have told you about drinking and driving and my Budweiser, Miller, and Coors sponsorships, that like drinking and driving is something I did when I was 19 one night after a Mike Tyson fight, had a little bit of a blackout, and never, ever, ever thought about doing it again. Two the alcoholic teacher. parents. So you learn about that. So you're yeah, getting yeah. pulled over. I'm sober when I'm getting pulled over. So like, right, I'm not afraid it. of that. I, I have two stories to tell you. I just thought of another story of getting pulled over that relates to Eddie Van Halen and Mike Messina. So oh I have to goodness. tell you this, okay? So I got pulled over coming home from the Baltimore Sun, 1990-91. Okay. I am by the Getz Caramel Factory, by the got Pompeian it. Olive Oil in Upper Highland Town, coming down Madison – a monument that way toward like where the gold club and chaps are. Cause I lived on Kane street. Okay. I yep. live where yep. Patterson high school was right. So I was coming the back way down urban Avenue. Um, so North point Boulevard. I'm it's 4am. Right. 4am. I get pulled over in front of like the new motel, which was totally like right by the minute. Yeah, it was a, it was a, yeah, it was a, 
a bit of a brothel, uh, and you can yep. Google that as well. But I'm driving <laughs> that way, and I got pulled over literally right at that gas station next to what the new motel where the road V's right where the gold club and sort of where uh, Edison Gar- – uh, what was the name of the neighborhood over there? Armstead Gardens. So I get pulled over. Cop comes up. I hand him my ID, hands it back to me, and he's like, your driver's license is expired. This isn't a time in your life, 1990, where I'm flying a lot or I'm pulling my ID out to show to anybody other than the bouncer at the club, because I think I was 21, but barely. And I looked at it and I'm like, damn, if it isn't. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. So how did he know that? What did he pull you over for? uh, He pulled me over for a taillight. Okay. I had a blow okay. tail light because I, you know, I had, I was probably driving a 77 Caprice classic wagon. It's like a, the Got family it. roadster. So yep. that's one story. And I'm like, so when you say red lights, it, like, I didn't even know out. I was doing anything right. wrong. Right. You know what he said to me? He's like, look, I can impound the car. Blah, 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 blah. He's like, you live over here in Kane Street, drive your car home. And, and I'm putting a notation on your 1990 or whatever. Right. That morning, I had to call my stepbrother. I had to drive to Bel Air. I had to take the entire driving test oh. over again because I was so out of expiration oh. that I had to take the whole test. It was like the scene in Taxi. <laughs> what does? <Yeah. laughs> oh, so I knew I'd make you laugh at that. And here I'm going to make it. you cry about this one. You ready for this Okay, one? go ahead. Go ahead. One of my best friends in the whole world, a man I love uh, more than I love most people, lives in Florida. He is by trade a psychologist, psychiatrist. I, I am not his patient, although I should be. Yeah. Um, and we, we've we known each other forever. He's a Dolphins fan, raising a family, doing a whole, practice, the whole thing. And I haven't seen him or heard from him in a while. And he texts me literally in the middle of like work yesterday, right? I'm watching the Oriole game. Something's going, I get this weird text. It's a picture of me and Eddie Van Halen Mm. from him. He's a Van Halen nut. And I apparently Eddie Van Halen and I, and I'm in the get nasty shirt are the cover of some Van Halen fan page right now. It's the mean, you know, like it's a really cool picture of Eddie because he's holding his guitar. Right. And right? Sammy, Mike Messina is in it, but it's a close up of just me and Eddie because I'm standing next to Eddie. And he said it to me. He's like, dude, I found this on the Internet. It's like crazy. And I'm like, so I'm like, it's sort of meant to be. I hear from him. That picture is featured in the 25th anniversary documentary, among uh, some yeah. other like crazy stuff I've done in my life. But that night it triggered me. It triggered me on Sunday in the middle of the game. And I looked at it and I wrote him back like something sort of flippantly funny i wrote him one sentence because we have that kind of relationship i wrote him that was a night lol right so it's like how did me and brad pennington and mike messina wind up in a picture with eddie van halen and sammy hagar and michael anthony and how's your is that your saint bernard or is that the maltese valley that's, that's the uh the the great pyrenees barking at the chickens at the house behind us he loves the chickens has he eaten one no, they're all but he fenced would like in. To. He's all fed. Oh yeah, he's their protector, and and he's probably not fast enough to catch them, right? Oh, I don't know. He's pretty fast. He's well. Pretty I'll fast. tell you who caught me that night, and the reason that picture moved me in a different direction because I've seen that picture, shared that picture. Anybody that has been my Facebook friend has seen the picture of the night backstage at Merriweather, uh, you know, 1993. Messina had just gotten hurt in the Hasselman fight. He mm. was on the DL. Like, so, you know, some weird things were going on at that time. So summer 93 and uh, the right here, right now tour. I had the tour share for 30 years. My wife had to strip it off my back as it fell apart. She ate it. <laughs> so, and it didn't fit me. So that night I pulled out with Mike and Mark Messina and whoever else, John Raffalides was with me. My, one of my, was my roommate at the time. And we we drove out of Merriweather Post, and I was taking Messina home, and he lived in Columbia. He lived off Dobbin Circle. He was still renting an apartment. He was not rich. He was barely famous. It was 1993. Got pulled over for a oh, rolling no. right turn at a stop sign oh, on a God. dirt road in Columbia. And I got jacked up in Howard County for a rolling right turn. And the cop pulls me over and sees me seen in the back seat and says, I hope your arm gets better. As he gave me a ticket. So like, when gave, you told me about like, 
I got a ticket. I got a ticket for a right stop sign thing in 1993. With Even Messina, with the man in the car. Even with the man in the car. Both machine is in the back seat. I think Moose said something like, I'll sign an autograph if it gets you off, dude. <laughs> didn't work. Clearly so didn't work. So when I saw this picture of me and Eddie Van Halen. There you go. It triggered a whole different thing. That's it. Well, back so to anyway, where we were, so my have friend. At it. You made the, me laugh with the rest. Uh, the, when you start talking about like uh, getting arrested and, and like bad things I'm happening, I'm not into you know? getting arrested. That's like my greatest fear ever would be prison. I remember when I was, oh, I don't know, how old were we? Seven, eight, ten, and went to school, and they showed us that damn scared straight video. Remember that? Oh, scared my God. Straight? Raw way? At the Raw oh way my prison? God. Remember yeah, I, I was with. never, I was never going to do anything bad. There you go. You see, there's the picture. Th th that's that, cool. Th that's, that's somehow, cool. this is on some page called Excellent. Van Halen Love Tora Tora. So I think it may be a Japanese Van Halen page. I don't know, Very right? Cool. I don't. I really don't know. But the it's an it's a period piece. What can I say about it, right? I mean, it's a period there piece. There you go. Right? So, there you go. I was, how are you? Attack I'm week. good, you're, man. You're, I'm uh, good. I'm, but All your good. nerves got... are better than my nerves oh, were yeah, that I'm night. Not, right? I don't... Uh, I don't nerve up about tax season. I, okay. I have, as a matter of fact, right here in my handy hands, if you right can here, see right this. Now. Let's, let's okay. see if we can get this. How do I get this? Was that a W focus? something to 1099? This, what is, is, that? this is a 4868. <laughs> that's the, that sounds that's like a 5150 form. is what it sounds the, like to me. 4868 is the form you file to get your extension with the federal taxes. Oh, you 812? There you go. So you file this form. You're, giving, you're opening the door for me here. You, you know? file this form, and it says to the federal government, I'm not ready to hand you my shit yet. Ooh, I should have said Fair that. enough, yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, I, I know a whole segment I'm, of the world that does this every year, right? right There's a whole course. population it's normal. that normal. April 15th is, I do it, is I do not every really just the another date, day, right? Just another okay. day. But, but remember, we talked about this before. April 15th and the 4868 doesn't mean you get to not, to not pay the tax. It just means you don't have to give them the paperwork. Government doesn't care about paperwork as long as they got their money. So you give them the paperwork later, but you give them the money now. And so what you do is you do the 4868. You figure out how much you might owe or what it is going to be. You put that on the number on the form and you go to the post office. And that gets you off the hook. You, you know, you pay. You have October. to pay them now if you're. Buying, That's right. Right. That's right. 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 That's okay. right. Just, you got to do the square up. If you owe them money, give them their money. Send and, the money, and, hit and you take it to the That's post it. office, and you send it certified. All right, I like it because they lose stuff. Mm -hmm. If you do it electronically, which you're able to do, they don't get it sometimes. If you don't send it certified, and they say you didn't send it, you're in trouble. Send it certified, fourteenth, fifteenth at the post office. You have the government telling the government it's on time. And do this before I'm at Fadley's at Friday, two o'clock. Don't wait till Monday, right? Like, yeah, it's get crazy. This done. There's get no this reason. Done. I mean, you know you're gonna do it. Just do it. It's, it's a piece of paper. You don't even sign it. You fill it out. You put your information on it. You send it off, and you're you done. Got time, man. The Orioles don't even play on on like on Tuesday night. You know what I there mean? You like, so there you go. Make, make a little time. Uh, we're going to be at Costas on Tuesday. We're going to be at Fadley's Friday. And this 25th anniversary is fun for me because people like Leonard have been listening, watching. I've met your whole family. A lot of people have asked me about it, and uh, so I I've been really doing that. Doing Oriole baseball, sort of gearing up for this NFL draft. I, it has been wonderful watching the women's basketball. Everybody's been watching. Uh, I went out with a friend on Friday and watched the men's basketball at Nacho Mama's. Um, so, like, I, I've been out Monday and about night, a little. I was final. in Chaucer the other night watching the ladies play. On Friday, I was in Highland Town. I was at Coco's the other night. I've been moving around town a little bit, not really on social media, but seeing people really digging sports and basketball Kickball. and baseball. A friend of fun. mine. Friend of mine's out in Iowa, or he's he's not in Iowa. He's a Iowa alum. He he says nothing better than Caitlin Chickball. <laughs> there you go. And and we had uh, what's it, Angel Reese, right? Angel sure. Reese, Baltimore, yeah. Baltimore girl. Uh, got all the accolades last year after LSU won it all, and uh, I think they named a basketball court downtown after her or something, or at her high school. I don't know. Uh, she and her brother both went to Maryland. She transferred out to LSU, and now she's all famed up. She's going to go into the WNBA along with Caitlin. They're going to be shooting up eyelashes or, I mean, three points from from everywhere. And uh, good for them. You know, the ladies, ladies need to make some money. The thing is, it's really weird, and I don't know that this is a fact, but I'm, I'm pretty certain you could Google it, as we say. Uh, the ladies' college basketball got massive – 
viewership. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think the WNBA 14 million gets... watched the first yeah. one. I don't have the numbers in yet. Uh, I'll, I'll keep checking because they'll be yeah. in early on Monday morning I think, uh, in I regard think to the, Saturday being legendary. I think this, yeah. the final game was the most watched Ooh, Sunday, women's game in history. But but I don't think anybody watches the WNBA. <laughs> well, For some and, and reason, listen, it's... it's... But listen, and Art Modell would tell you that in 1961 when no one was watching the NFL... Yep. That everybody had watched Army, Navy, and Michigan, and Notre yeah, Dame. Yeah, right, right. Right, the college sport built it. Same thing with college basketball and the NBA. Nobody watched the NBA. The That's college right. game, Luau Sindor, and, uh, you know, you go back to Bill Walton going into the NBA. And the That's NBA right. was a and dying sport along, in the 70s. Came along. And then Larry Bird and Magic saved it with college. Yeah, moved right, that, Transferred right. that to the NBA, and then Jordan and LeBron and Kobe and, like, all and of here that. Here we are. So, hey, look, listen, I've been on this soccer thing. For all my life, right? Like I've been a soccer guy. A lot of people aren't soccer people. I'm not Dave a soccer Johnson, guy. my dear friend Dave Johnson in DC is a legend yep. now. Yep. After 30 years of calling that sport, that yep. game, MLS, wh- whether you're into it or not into it, it's arrived. I mean, on the women's right. and men's side, right. when Carl right. Delmont comes on and the Harrisburg Heat and the Baltimore Blast, and uh, so it's it's a thing. Like MMA is a forever. thing when I have John it's Rollo, forever. Uh, right? Like all of these things take time and they can either be buried. And some would say indoor soccer is one of those things that during our lifetime, the blast yeah. in the eighties had a real chance to be sport number five or that next right. thing. Right. And hockey in the NBA have had chances to fail, flop, go on strike, not have television contracts, all of those things that have happened. And, you know, things like, um, like American Ninja Warrior. And things that aren't, we don't even think of as sports, have come along. But women's college basketball, I'll just say this from my heart. I covered college basketball in the 1980s. It's another part of my documentary that, like, I picked the All-Metro team for basketball and softball for a number of years at the Evening Sun, 89, 90, 91. I can name every one of those girls. I can name every one of their coaches. Bobby Nick, the, the famous DJ Bobby Nick. I met him in 1988. He was the coach of the Wild Lake um, basketball team. <laughs> he was the girls coach. And he was go. running a triangle. You know, like he, he was running Dean Smith concepts with girls who could play. And, and Greenberg was, had girls at Mount Hebron down there that would have been in the WNBA had there been sure, such a thing in sure. 1990. So I would just say I was watching it back. And I watched Dawn Staley play as a player. So, I mean, I, I stand in right. great admiration. It's beautiful to watch a game where they don't dunk. Right. right, they shoot. Where it's a really, it's a much more visually appealing game to me. And what, what Caitlin Clark's done, with Angel Reese becoming the, you know, the villain, like we've had WrestleMania this week and whatever, and there'll be next villains. And but there are girls playing basketball, their dads right. with daughters playing right. basketball. Hey, it's the, a beautiful thing. The women, Leonard. it really is. The women of the Ohio State University were in there for a while, and the women uh, of Ohio State hockey won the national championship Frozen Four, won nothing over Wisconsin. Well, and you mentioned all year, these fringe sports like here lacrosse. This year, hockey is, is that in first, a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, this year is the first, the start of the I don't know what they call it, the WHL, whatever. The Women's Professional Hockey League has started this year. So who knows what that's going to bring? But that blew out of the Olympics, and now they've got. Lots more teams in college, to which now they have enough to put together, I think, a six or eight team pro league. And maybe 25, 30 years from now, they'll be the original six or something. Well, like the women's thing the is so nascent to begin with, starting with Title IX and the availability yep, yep. of it. And a girl that's your age or my age or Dawn Staley's age would have had a totally different thing than that's the right. NIL. That's and right. What Angel Reese already has enough money in the bank. To probably yep. take care of herself the rest of her life if she knew she somebody wants. like you, right? That's right. That's she should. Right. And Caitlin Clark should, too, to some degree. And they should have to go over to Russia with a doobie and wind up in jail the way Brittany Grinder did. That's and right. still have her coach poop on her last week, literally, right? In Mulkey, right? So uh, there, I'm talking about these people. And I say one word, Mulkey. That might as well mean Gretzky. Everybody knows who she is yep. now. Yep. And we have moved to a place where we talk about wrestling in the 40th WrestleMania. I remember Cindy Lauper and Lou Albano. And it was, yeah. like a, it was all <laughs> club guys like you and me. Were Girls just want to have fun. Saturday afternoon wrestling. And now all of a sudden it's a billion dollar. Everybody goes to Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I, I, I feel that way about women's basketball. And I definitely feel that way 
soccer now, right? The 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 moment where you know the the top comes off is thirty years right. ago. It's right, amazing. Like, it's like amazing. it's amazing. It's crazy how far women's sports have come, and yep. why we should somehow be shocked that something like Caitlin Clark would come along, and Angel Reese would come along, and Kim Mulkey would come along, and there'd be good guys and bad guys. There'd be black and white. There'd be inside and outside play. There'd be college versus pro. There there'd be women broadcasters sitting doing right a, doing I the thought, games. No, oh, no, no, no. There was a bird. There was a whole yeah, separate second, broadcast. Second broadcast. There was a Manning yep. cast, right? Right, that that's right. Did, and I watched part of that, and yep. it's saucy, and it's spicy, and it's not for me. It's not meant for no, but, me. No, but it's But it's hoops. got an audience. That's Women's right. sports as an audience now. Big time. When you think about it, think about it. In the in the final four of the women's, you had UConn, right? They Gino Ariyama, coach Legend. of UConn, 11 national championships but if you go back to the last one and the ones he won he was blowing they were blowing people out by 40 points 30 points they were the team and everybody else combined was a team like harlem globetrotters kind <laughs> right of sort of. yeah right like, like wooden's teams were in the in that's the right now he's yeah. got to struggle to get back to the final four and to win people are going what's wrong with gino why isn't he won in uh, whatever because all the other teams have gotten better and better hey, and you, better. And you're it's not now a lacrosse sport. guy, and I'm not a lacrosse guy. No, not but really. come on, when we were of that age, it was either yep. Syracuse or Hopkins, and that was That's it. That's right. That's that was right. it, right? N- That's now, right. we're all in a over. whole different world, right? And the women's, too. The women's lacrosse. Same same gig, man. So, it is, so we see this is in changing. other sports and other changing. ways, right? Yep. North Carolina yep. women's soccer. Go Google that. You know, same thing. Just beat everybody forever and yep. ever and ever. And then people catch up. Hey, Kim Mulkey came from that Louisiana Tech program that kicked everybody's ass, right? They wore those right. oiler blue jerseys back in the day. <laughs> Listen, I watched women's basketball. I'm not new to the party. Hey, I have a funny right. story for you. Yeah, I love sure. having going. Leonard Raskin is here. Raskin Global. Do your taxes. Think your taxes. If you're freaked out, call Leonard this week. He'll unfreak you out, and he'll set you straight That's and right. give you some gospel. Uh, you can also find him at Baltimore Positive. Um, my wife and I were at the owners' meetings at yeah. the St. Regis. This is the one where Bashadi came up in the middle of the night and pulled me away from the Harbaugh table when I was with Jim Harbaugh, Jack Harbaugh, John Harbaugh, and came over and told me to leave them alone, uh, <laughs> which I've told that story. It's 15 years ago now. So we left the airport or left the, the event and we flew out of, I want to say it was like the uh, the orange, it was the Orange County airport because we were down okay. near Orange County down it, and by the way, if, if you've never been to that area, uh, it is the San Juan Capistrano uh, area of Southern California. Um, it is one of the most – Dana Point is one of the most yep. beautiful, beautiful places beautiful. in the world. In the world. And I had never known that, and the owners' meetings were there. It was a one-off, Leonard. They never went back. The St. Regis has become a development. It's not even there anymore. They they – they they can the Biltmore for one time on the West Coast in March of 09, I believe it was. And my wife and I went to the airport. We get on a plane. The plane was going to Oakland because we were going to San Francisco for something. I don't know, to see a concert, something. I, I, don't, I don't even know. We were sure. going to see Julio. And we're on a plane to Oakland after the NFL owners meetings in Orange County. And we're on a Southwest plane, old rickety Southwest plane. Yeah, sure. We get on, and Al Davis is on our plane. There you go. And Al is with Amy Trask, who I didn't know then, who I know now, was with a a woman. It was Amy Trask for sure. And a few other people who were in his arrangement. He was still of good mind, Al Davis. Yep, yep. And he sat down on the plane in front of me for two hours from the minute we sat down taxiing bathroom break up in the air an hour landing the entire time he sat literally right in front i could touch his head yeah he's in the seat yeah. in front of me the entire flight it was this time of year so it was march 26th 7th 8th 9th in that range right right newspapers are still cool it's 2009 he had the usa today <laughs> he spent the entire two hours Bending the ear of Amy Trask and anyone in his earshot of March Madness, the women's bracket, 
There you go. He was absolutely obsessed with women's college basketball. Crazy. He loved it. He talked about it. He knew the girls. He knew the players. He knew the coaches. He knew the matchups. He was unbelievably into it. So I, you gave me a, a lane to tell you a story that I don't know that I've ever told on the air. There you go. But I've told Amy Trask that, and she, she's like, absolutely, Al loved yeah. it. Yeah. It was Al's thing. Wore her out. Wore her out. With well, it. but I mean, there, there were people into it. And Al was right. always on the front end of everything ever in his life. Absolutely. But they never made sense to anybody else, right? <laughs> and his son's haircut to go. I was in a restaurant oh. two weeks ago, Saturday night in Orlando. See, Luke got the pass yeah. to go to the owner's meeting reception on Monday night. Because right. Luke had the pass. I've right. been to that party 20 times. Big shrimp, Roger Goodell. Used to be Norby Williamson, no more. Um, but executives are there. Troy Aikman's there. Joe Bucks. I mean, I yeah, literally saw all of them as they went in and all of them as they came out. I saw virtually everybody who yep. who didn't run from me. Bashad right. ran from me. DaCosta ran from me. John Harbaugh never saw me. Jim Harbaugh and I spent 20 minutes catching up. Um, yep. So I had a beautiful time. But at 730, everybody's going into the party. And about 9.30 or 10, they start coming out. But the drinks there are free. So right. everybody kind of stays, right? Stays Until around. 11, until they, they shut the bar down. Ask Luke about how many martinis he had. Um, I think it was Johnny Walker, red, black, blue. I don't know, just Johnny <laughs> Walker or something. So I had to go somewhere and eat. So I went to the Fufu Shishi bar there to get my parking validated, my $38 parking validated at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando. And I, well, I walk in, I'm at the bar, and I made friends, and people were wonderful, and I had a delicious sure. meal, had a salad, and this and that. Mark Davis walks in. There you go. Completely alone, completely alone, completely alone. At a party where there's a party out there, and there's a thousand people, it's in the middle of the party. He yep. walked in and got a table alone all by himself in a beautiful Italian restaurant. I'm sure he got the rigatoni. It was delicious. Um, but I saw him do that two weeks ago i told jt the brick i said your owner just walked in here (laughs) everybody else is over there he's over here he doesn't care it it just tells you who we're all wired different aren't we? that's right really that's right he's waiting for the oakland sacramento vegas a's to come to town tell me about that how do you feel about that as a fan i i think it's horrible and so what you know, I don't live in Oakland. What do they get? A thousand people a night? But because this, they're, but, but the owner on. is the one that's blown that up. This is too big to fail in every way, right? Like, there's no normal course of normal business that you go this, through with people that do normal business that can behave in this fashion that would allow their partners to be a blight. If this were a Marriott location, they would shut yep, it down. And shut take it down. The, they would take the name off the top Receivership, of it. Right. Chick-fil-A they would, would just say, stand. you're no longer a Marriott. You're, you're no not a longer qualified That's to be right. McDonald's anymore. That's right. Put up got, a new, you got rats in the basement. You can't be a put subway up a new one. anymore. That's you know? right. Shutting you like, down. Literally, and Major League Baseball Baseball has forever from the time that Seelig. Hey, man, I had Jesse Ventura on my show at the turn of the century on Nasty Nationwide because I was on in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and they were trying to shut the twins down. They were trying to, like, (laughs) contract the twins. Right. So they were actively they had the commissioner talking about shutting down franchises and they're doing PR on that. What? Because they're trying to eliminate 50 Major League Baseball jobs. right? Right. They got Montreal in hell at that point. They could never figure out Miami. They had all – Tampa was a mess already then, and it's 25 years later. Angelos is effing up the Orioles forever, right, at that point. Yep. And yep. they still played the Expos in San Juan. They did all of this stuff. They screwed up everything with Angelos for two – they're still untangling from that, and they have a new owner yep. at a yep. billion seven. And this Oakland thing is just – they're going to Vegas. They're, They're going, going to Vegas. To Sacramento. For a couple of years till they build the place in Vegas. Uh, okay. Or who's paying for it? I don't know. I guess did, the people of Vegas. Were you did you watch what happened to Kansas City last week? Did you see that? Yes, they downed they downed the tax increase for the Leonard, stadium. Be, be honest with me. Be honest with like be honest. Now and I'm gonna ask yeah. every politician this. No, go ahead. If during twenty twenty one plague middle of the play yeah this would have hit the ballot to give john angelos 
Georgia Angelos at that point, literally. Yep, yep. And Steve Bishotti six hundred million dollars each. Each. We would have voted on. Do we want to give them six hundred million dollars in this state? If that would have, I'm going to ask Bill Ferguson this. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask Brooke Learman this. I'm going to ask Wes Moore this. If I'm going to ask Larry Hogan, is he trying to get elected? I'll ask Joe. You know how it passed. They don't. Nobody hears about it till it's too late. Done. Signed. Bishotti still hasn't answered a question. And it literally saw me on a veranda, knowing me 25 years, and ran from me. Didn't even say Crazy. hello, didn't exchange Crazy. pleasantries. After taking my press credentials, ran from me and did not make himself available. And they made Sashi hey. Brown available in this noisy restaurant where my employee attended. And he gave all of this Pollyanna nonsense, and he hasn't met with the people here. By the way, he's speaking at the CEO Club later this month. So uh, do you yeah. want to you want to shake some things up over there? Maybe you or me or Steve Tremino that I should ask him a few questions because he deserves to have. They took six hundred million dollars. I, I, I guess it. that's my point in all of this is Rubenstein has inherited this, right? Yeah. And it yep. feels like he might want to be a stand up guy about this in a different kind of way. I hope. And I'm we'll see. continuing the challenge, and we'll, we'll see. see. Cal Ripken's involved in this. Kurt Schmoke's involved in this. Cal. Evan Hill, or you know, excuse me, uh, Grant Hill's Grant involved Hill. in this. Yep. Uh, so I, I, I would Bloomberg, all of this. There are really important, really, really important civic questions that can be asked. It's one of the Absolutely. reasons you support me. It literally, literally is, is because I'm the one guy willing to ask them. That has been in contact with Westmore's people this week, and I was on the phone with Johnny O's people five minutes before you came on because we're trying to get together. Yes, he's yeah. running for office, but this bridge going down and what it's going to do to the business down at Trade Point Change the world. and Costas, Change the world. It, it's it's an unbelievable, it's an earthquake to my people Absolutely. and to everybody down there that I love who yep. supported me, yep. and I want to make sure world. we're supporting them. So, six hundred million dollars for both of these teams. I mean. Kansas City's not doing that. Oakland's not nope. doing that. Sacramento's nope. not doing that. Vegas might do that, maybe. I don't know. I don't but, know. like, this stuff isn't happening in other places. And it's all the more reason, as I say to Luke, and I would say to John Harbaugh as he's out doing his Fellowship of Christian Athletes tour right now, to whom much is given, much is expected. You know? Yep. And yep. That's all I ask as a citizen. That's all I that's ask. That's it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Right there. Yeah, that's it. So, it's a little baseball. What? How are you doing with the new? It's a beautiful vibe to get into what time's the game. Oh, they don't play today. Oh, they're playing. Hey, I'll meet Nestor over Costas. They're playing it too. I'll take a, take a half day. Like, I love that. Exciting ball. It, it's it's fresh for my soul again. Exciting and I really ball. hope at some point I meet Rubenstein and it's nice and it's good and I get treated like a human being. I'm giving a lot of oxygen for that. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. Other things. I don't need to come back to the ballpark today or tomorrow. I need to come back permanently and for the right reasons, like yep. literally. And that's the way yep. I'm viewing it. But like I am I'm looking at the schedule and saying to Luke on the air, hey, man, we can go out to Oakland. You want to go? You, you know, hey, dude, right. you got a passport, right? They play in Toronto. That would be fun. Let's go up to Buffalo and go over for a couple of whole days. New, whole new world. I've seen these people have fun Winning in Pittsburgh, vibe. and it makes me feel like, not that I want to go to Pittsburgh on a cold day when it's snowing right. sideways. Right. Um, but, like, it did look like fun. Look, Didn't look full. But a lot of but O's fans. Seats available. A lot of O's fans hanging out. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, in the other ownership, and this is where I get sideways. I was listening to Melanie Newman do the game on yeah. the way back from my yoga class the other day. And last year, I heard her and Jeff Arnold purposely not denigrate a player who wasn't running out of a, a ball, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even know what player it was. I'm not going to indict anybody. Right. I'm indicting right, right. the broadcasters, but I'm really not. I'm indicting the ownership of how Kevin Brown was treated yep. and yep. what they're allowed to say and not allowed to say. Ben McDonald is talking about books he's reading to save his marriage. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and it's become this fun little – Kevin Brown is obviously the geekiest, geekiest, weirdly yeah. rock and roll. Like, I don't know him. I haven't met him. It would be fun to jive. It would be fun to have a crab cake with him next sure. off season and get to really know him and have and get to ask my questions in my format that six governors have been on and on and on and on, right? So, like, I would love to have it be normal. Ben McDonald tweeted at me Sunday. Like I, I tweeted, I, I wrote out loud. I love Ben McDonald. And I don't care who knows it. Yeah. And I do. <laughs> and I knew Ben as a player. He's fun. He's fun. And I love Ben. And I, and I love watching it. I like following it. I just want to go back to the ballpark and be treated better than I've ever been treated because 
they're good people who want to treat me well and want me on the air talking about them being good people who want to treat me well and want to treat everybody well and they want ever everybody to come back. And and I would say this to you, a um, little homework for oral history. I had Charles Steinberg on uh, this week. It is the best piece of radio I have done um, since Cup of Super Bowl because I did a lot of magical stuff that was really heavy lifting, important stuff, life-saving stuff that week. But from a baseball standpoint, I want you to invest a half an hour in listening to Charles Steinberg, who's up running the Woo Sox, who just lost his best friend in the world, the Larry Lacino this week, yeah, and talking yeah. about Larry's contributions. It, I couldn't get Larry on this week. We lost him. I got, yep. I had Larry's spirit here for 40 minutes. Uh, I, I heard it in the car before I did this piece with you. It was, I was just running on the radio and, um, I want the spirit of what Charles Steinberg has talked about for our people. I want that sort of leadership back for our community and for the 600 million. That's what I want in return. You know what I want in return, Leonard? I want something better than Sashi Brown. That's what go. I want. I want a higher go. bar than that. Or at least step up and answer. Yeah. Be available. Yeah. I mean – where are you with the Leones' thing? You've been watching that circus down there. I mean, well, that's he, really been a circus, right? He, Talking he about bribed, money. And he bribed D.C. through Virginia, and he got what he wanted. He's getting – Virginia said no. Taxpayers said no. And Mariel Bowser, D.C. crazy mayor, uh, gave him the store to stay in D.C. So does another she, she have to another do that, or does she not have to do that? What, well, what are the Virginia other said here? no. Virginia said no. What's he going to do? Well, he's not coming to Bill Ferguson and Adrian Jackson. Right. Like, well, that's and, what I'm and, saying. So where's he going? Washington said yes, and they're going to destroy the surrounding neighborhood to make him richer. <laughs> and the rich get richer. You know? So well, that's here's a great goes. question. That's here's how a, it goes. You, you got a minute or you got an appointment? You, you no, got I'm a good. Minute? I'm yeah, good. I, I, let's take a deeper dive. Let's roll. Okay. Yeah, let's roll. Let's, let's, let's talk about this. Yep. Refer to me as Governor Aparicio or just King sure, for, for this, sure, for this sure. purposes of this conversation. Governor of the Lordship of the Commonwealth of the Greater People of Maryland. Yep. Right. Uh, Mr. Leonsis, let's let's have a meeting. Covert. Ted's in my phone. I could text Ted. Yep, yep. So as the king and as the governor here, or as the governor's emissary, let's say sure. Governor Moore makes me the king of gives me Terry Hazeltine's. But a real job. And, Got it. and and I get to play John Moog and recruit. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Yeah. Because Leonard, we're trying to grow our community. We got a train station here. We're on the corridor. We're gonna build a, a speed line that could get you anywhere in ten minutes, right? Like literally, we're gonna have trains I've been on in Tokyo. Like trains that go real fast. Right. Fast, train. Lev, right? fast yep. trains, right? We're gonna do that from New York to Richmond because Ted yep. said we're gonna be a megalopolis, right? And Ted owns a team. He's a billionaire. He's a genius. AOL, look him up. He's really smart. I know you he's really mail. smart. And you I, I say that for real. I have been with Ted privately for hours. He's really smart. He is. I'll say that Got as it. the king, as the governor, or the sports radio guy who doesn't really respect him much, um, but thinks he's smart. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna go down and have a meeting with the monumental folks who want to have a television megaopolis too, right? Sure. Like his big right. play is TV. Right. Mr. Leones, I'll tell you what we, we, we can do for you. I have this really struggling city up in Baltimore. We're building this red line and we're building this maglev. And I've got this place called Westport. It's got a lot of uh, African-American heritage and lineage, some good, some not so good. Uh, and it's got water access and we got a land developer down here who's been trying for 20 years to get TIFFs and get some special sauce. We have some federal special sauce from the bridge and this and that. We're trying to put Baltimore back together again. How would you feel about Baltimore Wizards? How would you feel about Baltimore Clippers? And we'll just retire the Capitals name and we'll bring yeah. the teams here. So here's what we'll do. I'll give you a, how much you need, a billion five? Billion five. I'll give you billion. a billion five. I just gave these these two football teams a billion two. We'll write it over 50 years. You'll sign a long-term lease. We're going to bring the NBA back to Baltimore. Yep. We're going to bring the NHL back to Baltimore. We're going to build a maglev that's going to get people from resting up here in 18 minutes uh, for, you know, $8 in the future. Yep. And we're really going to show off that DC's 
kind of the center of the world, but Baltimore is going to be the center piece. Baltimore is going to be what Philadelphia failed to be and what New York has faltered. Baltimore is going to be the center of everything because we're going to have an NHL team and an NBA team and a maglev and you want Major to League big, Baseball you want to and big? NFL. We got, we got all that. We already funded right. that. Right. So we, but, you know, we got crime. We got kids. We got schools. We got deteriorating. Inf- we got we got a train track under the city. We have. But I'm just saying, like, that's the kind of talk you have to talk. Right. In order. These days. These days. That's what it so takes. So if you can move the A's. The theoretically yeah. to Vegas via Sacramento. Why yep. wouldn't if he wants to come to Maryland and Wes Moore is going to meet with him down there and Mur- Muriel Bowser's not going to get it done in D.C., then yep. the next step has to be, yeah, I mean, Where I'll else? bring you I'll bring you some money and we'll put it on a ballot in Maryland. But those teams are going to sit in Baltimore and we're going to be a four sport sport town and we're going to build a maglev around it. We're going to build blah, 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 and we're yep. going to have jobs and we're going to have but our Virginia. Turn, we're going to have our Atlanta community that goes up I around it. it where we own. Things around it that bring people there. 360. Uh, it's an entertainment center on the new waterfront in Westport. That's a four trillion dollar thing that includes bringing the NHL and the NBA to Baltimore. I'm all in, except I tried Virginia. They said no, and DC came in with a lot of money, and I signed a lease, and I'm staying. <laughs> because Baltimore didn't get to him fast enough. I'm listen, I'm just dreaming here this morning, but I, I am it. creating what I used to say was good radio. Cause if I open the phone lines right now at four ten four eight one fifteen seventy, we could talk about it all day. Right. All we could talk day. about it all day. People would people would be all over it. And all and, and whether or not and it, it, whether, no right, way it would ever not, happen. Whether I mean, not if we, we had the to go right now to vote a billion two to keep the two teams we got, we'd have a hard time doing that. We really oh, there's no doubt. If you'd if you'd have voted for the million two, I don't know what would have happened. Just like Kansas City, and what are they going to do if they Hogan lose? Come out for that. What are they going to do if they lose the Chiefs? What are they going to do then? They lose the Chiefs. I saw I saw over the weekend. Uh, Texas said we we got room for another team. Bring the Chiefs. They're now doing this thing. Bring the Chiefs back to Texas. Well, maybe the Dallas Texas Dallas can take the Caps and the, and the Wizards to Austin. You know hey. what I mean? Like, like I, I'm literally just saying, I saw Stan Kroenke. He didn't run for me. He doesn't know me. I saw them all, Leonard. I, I yep. saw Ziggy Wolf and Robert Kraft chatting yep. in the foyer. Yep. Like, I saw Stephen Jones come in with wine and poured it for everybody. It was Silver Oak, by the way. Um, there you go. So, I, I, like, I, I would just tell you. Look, I it's just a billionaire's people. club soaking the consumer, soaking I mean, the Stan taxpayer Kroenke for fortunes. He left his own people to go yeah. to L.A. to build yep. a hub for the league. And to your point, they have raised the bar there to even the point where the Cincinnati Bengals compete. They don't have any crazy. broken spokes like the Oakland Athletics or the nope. Tampa Bay Rays or the Angelos Orioles nope. that, you know, that kneecap the learner nationals of their money that beget how many of these teams tread water, the Pittsburgh Pirates that just print money and right. put – as, as Andy McPhail once said out loud, why serve them steak when they'll eat hamburger? Exactly. That's, that's what it we is. We need to make sure the Rubenstein's not doing that. I don't think he's going to do that. He, he but he needs to be to. held accountable to do that. That's all. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. And and he says he's going to do better, and we're going to find out. Because there's a bunch of kids in the minor leagues dying to get up here. And you're either going to bring them up or sell them off, one or the other. Well, that's going to save them money. I mean, Luke and of I course. spent the whole day of talking course. about, hey, you get, Hayes and Mullins go out when they're making $12 million a year. Let them go. We'll replace them with cows. We'll replace them with Kurt right. And in the next right. five years, we got cheap help. Hey, that's Absolutely. what keeps the Ravens together. And that's what's no going to break them up with Lamar making hey, all this money. Look, is you got, Lamar's not going to have you got Odell, you know? Jadavian Clowney. How about that deal, huh? Two and a half million dollars for a year. To come to the Ravens, he re- resurrected his his standing, studded out for the season, and then went to Carolina and got two years, twenty five million dollars. Good for him. 
good no, for Joe him. Flacco just got four and a half million more to, to come in because he proved he could Isn't do he it. Going to the, he going to the Colts now? Yeah, man. He's doing the he's whole gonna, four. He's, he's going to be the uh, at some point, right? Right. He's going to be the, uh, what's his name? <laughs> he's going to win a the playoff beard? game for the Steelers who's, one day. Who's the beard? Uh, uh, help me. Oh, help oh me, Ryan beard. Fitzpatrick. I saw Fitzpatrick, him. yes. He was at the bar at Joe, the Ritz two weeks Joe ago. Joe is going to fight Fitzpatrick for the most uniforms. I saw Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> eight feet away from where Chad Steele stared at me and dared me to come over and talk to Steve Bishotti at midnight. Right. So th- th- this is the world I'm living in while these guys get $600 million. And we talk about Kansas City For not do- doing it. For free. Where Oakland hasn't done it. Where yep. Vegas might not do it. Where St. Louis didn't do it. Oh, Vegas on is going to do on it. On and on Vegas is going to do it. They want it. And they told you. And they got hockey. And they got football. And they're going to get baseball. And the NBA is not too far behind. Let's not kid ourselves. And Ted Leone just saw all of this and said, I want mine. And DC said, certainly, sir. No, not certainly, one. sir. They said, go shop. That's right. Go and when he shopped. Yourself. Go over but, to Virginia like Thomas when Jefferson. Virginia, and put your feet there and eat cherry pie and tell everybody. But when Virginia, go Virginia said no, they still said yes. They still said yes, even though they, they – clawed their way to yes but they did it all right well you're done with me Leonard raskin uh you've brings, got mail <laughs> bring sensibility to all of this at raskin you've global uh you can find him there at raskinglobal.com as well as at baltimore positive uh out on the front of our website hope to get a crab cake with you soon we're getting this thing back out on the road uh you know springsteen can get back out on the road i can go have some crab cakes this there month, you go right? amen i am nestor we are wnst am 1570 taos in baltimore Let a man dream a little bit about the Baltimore Clippers in the National Hockey League. Yeah.